The supercharger, or G-charger, as it's more commonly called, was used in preference to a turbocharger for several reasons. The G-charger offers high torque and responsiveness even at low engine revs. This is in contrast to a turbocharger which only becomes effective after a certain amount of turbo lag. This means that the G-charger is particularly well suited to engines under 2000 cc. Further advantages include its quiet operation and relatively simple adaptation to exhaust emission control systems. The G-charger was used in preference to other types of superchargers because of its high efficiency and durability. The name comes from the spiral-shaped main component, the displacer which resembles the letter G. Incidentally, the width of each G-shaped spiral is 60 millimeters, hence the name G60. The displacer and the two housing halves basically complete the unit. The displacer, which is mounted on two eccentric shafts, moves within the spirals of the housing. A small toothed belt connects the two shafts together to ensure accurate movement of the displacer. To ensure a good seal between the moving displacer and the spiral elements of the housing, special elastic seals are installed. Due to the low relative speed between the displacer and the housing, approximately 10,000 RPM, a long service life should be possible. The input, or drive shaft, of the G-charger is driven by the engine crankshaft via a multi-ribbed V-belt. The belt's tension is maintained by an automatic adjuster. The lubrication circuit for the supercharger is via a hose from the rear of the cylinder head and a return line to the sump. So how does the G-charger work? The moving spirals of the displacer trap and squeeze the incoming air, so forcing it round the spiral and into the centre. From the centre of the unit, the compressed air is directed to the engine. Before the air reaches the inlet manifold, it passes through an intercooler. This reduces the temperature by approximately 55 degrees centigrade, depending on the operating conditions. The cooled, more dense air improves the filling of the cylinders and increases the power output. In the part load and idling ranges, the G-charger supplies more air than the engine requires. In this situation, excess air is returned to the inlet side of the supercharger via a bypass valve and duct. The bypass valve is fitted in the throttle housing, next to the throttle valve assembly. A small linkage connects the two valves. These valves work in conjunction with each other. When the throttle is closed, for example at idle, the bypass valve is open, allowing excess air to be directed back to the inlet side of the G-charger. As the throttle is progressively opened, the bypass valve is correspondingly closed, so increasing the flow of air into the engine. The operation of the G-charger, in conjunction with the bypass valve, limits the maximum boost pressure to about 0.7 bar. Under certain conditions, to reduce engine knock, particularly in the upper load and high rev ranges, it's necessary to regulate accurately the boost pressure. This is carried out by activating the idle stabilization valve, depending on information received by the Digifant control unit. At the correct moment, the idle stabilization valve is opened. This allows unwanted air to be directed back from the manifold to the inlet side of the supercharger, thereby reducing the boost pressure. In this way, it's possible to control smoothly and accurately the boost pressure.